Hey there, everybody. Uh, it's Brad Reed with the Inside Creative Writing Podcast. Welcome once again to this week's real-time revision. Uh, this week on the podcast, if you've listened to it already, uh, um, if you haven't, it's coming out on Monday. Um, but if you have, then you'll know that what we did is we explored a uh, kind of metaphor that is always in my mind as I'm writing, especially when I'm revising, about how writing is like sculpting. Right. And I'm not going to go too into depth into that because hopefully you'll check out that podcast episode. But uh, essentially what I was talking about is um, how just like a sculptor, I think of a sculptor who's creating a statue out of wood. Right. The first step is just kind of knocking off all of the edges, all of the big chunks of wood that don't belong um, in that sculpture. And then that second step revision is really going in with that detail work. Right. And starting to make every inch of that sculpture. Uh, polish to make it look exactly like the artist or the sculptor is intending it to look. And that's the way I look at writing as well, right? My rough draft is kind of that initial uh, crude um, attempt at just getting the shape of the story in place. And then revision is where I go through and I work that detail work. So as we look at uh, the revision that I'm working on today, I want to do that with that uh, metaphor in mind, because I think it'll make a nice little companion to this week's podcast. So uh, with that in mind, as I bring up my draft here that I'm working on. Um, I, I just previewed this paragraph right here. Whoops. This paragraph right here. And what I realized is, um, you know, if we're looking at that metaphor of writing being like a sculpture, this is a piece of wood that uh, just needs to be taken off, right? There, there's too much material here. And I find that a lot of times when I'm writing, I'll do this, right? Where I'm actually not writing or telling a story. Um, I'm exploring what I think the character is thinking or feeling in that moment. And I realize when I'm going back through to revision that its purpose is not furthering the story. Its purpose is helping me understand who this character is and set up the decision-making process for her next step. So um, basically to catch up with the story here, uh, my protagonist is um, still, as she will be for most of the book, still kind of trapped out in the wilds of Oregon after this earthquake, trying to find her way home to Newport. Um, so to lead into this section, She's just making the decision here that um, she's never going to be able to make it home with the huge backpack that she's now carrying if she tries to actually follow the highway because it is such a serpentine highway, right? All full of switchbacks and it's going to take her miles and miles and miles to follow the highway. So she's convincing herself here that she needs to just go overland, right? She's found this uh, compass um at one of the houses that she uh, went through and found abandoned. And uh, she's realizing, wait a second, I've got this compass. I can just head straight west. So um, this is her right in this section, just thinking about that, right? I'd never used a compass before, but Mike's F-350 had one in the dash. So she knew enough to head west. Um, eventually, she'd find Highway 101 in the ocean. The highway meant home, a straight shot north to Newport from there. So she's she's got her plan in mind. And now notice how this section probably doesn't need to be here. Basically, I'm going to look through this and see if there's anything in here I need to keep, but my gut is to get rid of this whole piece, kind of like a chunk of wood on a sculpture that doesn't need to be there. So I'm going to read through this real quick and see if there's anything um, important that has to stay. Alcy was out there somewhere and I worried that I'd miss it. So this feels important, right? So she's she's having a little bit of a dilemma here, whether she's making the right choice, but this is not a new thought, right? So I feel like this sentence here um, can simply, in fact, I'm just going to cut and paste that as part of this paragraph, right? A straight shot north to Newport from there. Alcy was out there somewhere, and I worried... Um, I don't like this eyed, right? I'm always looking for these little uh, ways to clean up punctuation like we talked about, uh, was, I think it was last week. So Elsie was out there somewhere and I worry that I'd miss it and I worried I would, I might miss it. But it was worth the risk. So um, I might miss LC. So I just literally restated the same thing here. So that can go away. You'll notice this is highlighted. What I do with Google Docs, I may have mentioned this before, is that I'll just drop in a little note or a little comment um, just saying start revising here. So I always know uh, when I come back to this on whatever computer, whatever place I might be writing that I can pick right up where I left off. So um, disregard the highlight there. That's all that means. So 
Uh, so we can get rid of this, which is actually going to get rid of that highlight, um, and see if there's anything else I need in here. But I wasn't entirely sure that Alcea was even on this highway. I'd only driven it twice before. It was the long way to the valley, and I had been on mental autopilot both times. All of this was set up previously, right? We saw her... Um, begin to drive the section on mental autopilot. Um, she's already commented that it was a road she was unfamiliar with. So this is all doing work that's been done before. Wouldn't I rather get home sooner? I could be in Newport sooner by going overland than I could be in all sea by going uh, on the highway. Wasn't that true? See, notice how this wasn't that true. That doesn't feel like her voice, right? Because it's not. This is my voice as the author trying to sort through my story beats here, sort, sort through my plot points. And I'm really asking myself, now, isn't that true? Um, which obviously doesn't need to be in the story. This has all been covered in a previous um, paragraph or previously in the story. So it's not doing any new work. Uh, boy, there's a quote. I'm going to have to look this up. But there's a quote uh, that basically says something along the lines of the only unforgivable sin that you can create in writing is repetition or something like that, right? So as soon as you start repeating something, even if you're saying it in kind of a different way, if your audience is already, if your reader already has heard it, um, this feels like dead weight to them, right? They either feel like you're treating them um, as not very intelligent because you have to keep repeating these things or they just get bored with it. So I'm always really cognizant of, um, when I'm trying to do work that I've already done before, right? So, um, I can get rid of all this too, cause it's been done before. And even if I did find out, see, there's no guarantee that there would be help and information there for me. The choice seemed obvious and my God was, was with me. So this too has been covered before, um, earlier in the story. I don't think it's a section that I, uh, used for a real time revision, but we learned that all sees this little kind of tiny little town. So we know, right. We recognize as a reader that there's no guarantee there's going to be help there. Um, we don't need to say that out loud. The only piece that might need to be here um, is this idea that she's not giving up on her faith at this point. That's going to be a, a huge theme throughout this story is, um, you know, at what point does, uh, does her faith crack uh, for her? Um, so I do kind of want this little, um, little moment in here where she's where we understand as a reader that she's willing to make this kind of risky decision because uh, she believes in this God that is guiding her, right? And actually, this is going to be a little bit of a deep dive here. So I apologize if this is too much to do in a real-time revision. But back here a little earlier, I embedded... Um, uh, here it is. So I embedded this little initial doubt, right? Um, I'm trying to build in these doubts that maybe uh, this religion that she believes in that's been passed down from uh, parent to child for generations, uh, you know, may not be valid. So I have this moment here earlier where um, she says, uh, my father had said that animals have a sixth sense of her disaster and run to safety before it lets loose. Maybe that's just an old wives tale passed down to children who accept it without question and pass it down to their children in turn. Right? So here's my first little doubt in, wait a second, maybe not everything my parents have told me, um, is reliable. So I want to somehow make this reference to, but God was with me. Um, a little more subtle because that feels too on the nose. So if I can just echo some of this language here. Maybe that's just an old wives tale passed down to children who accept it without question and pass it down to their children in return. So I like this without question. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be successful or not, but you're getting to see the nitty gritty here of how my brain works when I'm revising. So uh, straight shot to Newport from there. Alcee was out there somewhere and I worried I might miss it but it was worth the risk. So basically what I need here is another thing that sounds or feels to the reader like kind of an old wives tale that she still believes in. And hopefully that's going to be subtle enough um, that the reader makes that connection. Like, wait a second. She just realized that not everything that's been passed down to her is valid. Um, but why is she still trusting this? So let me think through this here a minute. I'll see was out there somewhere and I worried I might miss it, but it was worth the risk. As my father always said, um, and I'm just going to make something up here to get something on the page for what I'm thinking about. Uh, when you go with God, 
you go with confidence. Um, so I think you can see what I'm getting at here, right? I'm trying to get this. Uh, let me go back up here. Passed down two children who accept it without question. So here it is. My father always said that this, and it's wrong. So I want to have another mention here. As my father always said, that might be too close, right? To literally repeat that line. Um, as my father always said, when you go with God, you go with confidence. Uh, I this this is not working. It's closer though, right? I think you can see uh, what I'm getting at here. Is that I'm trying to get this echo in. Um, I'm not going to belabor this point because it's really not what I was um, uh, thinking <laughs> I would do as I looked at this real-time revision. But you never know, right? These are the places that popped up. And like like I talk about in that um, in this week's podcast, these are those moments where the polish happens, right? It's worth getting in here and digging through this. And I may rewrite this this section, these two lines, 8, 10, 12, 15 times, right? Until it clicks into place and I find that right balance of subtlety um, yet obviousness that my reader will make that connection, yet it doesn't stand out as um, too heavy handed or, uh, or convoluted. So I'm going to leave this for now. In fact, I'm going to drop a little note here um, just to, oops, Sorry, you can't really see this on the page the way I have it cropped, but I'm just going to drop a little note here. It's telling myself, revise this to make it more subtle, but connected with previous, quote, old wives tale. So now I know when I come back to this, um, which I will several times, um, that... This is not necessarily how it's going to stay in my draft, but it's the hint of what I'm trying to accomplish with this. So now you see that I lost an entire paragraph here that almost all of it was um, just filler, right? It was just me thinking through the story. So going back to that metaphor, right? This is the artist. This is the sculptor who's got the rough outline done, kind of the, you know, taking the chainsaw to the piece of wood. And um, now as, as she's going through and excuse me, uh, polishing this, she's seeing little sections where she didn't remove quite enough, right? So that's that's all I'm doing here is I'm finding those places where uh, this is, excuse me, this is extra material that just doesn't need to be there. So uh, let's look, we'll just peek into this next paragraph and see if there's anything productive to explore here. I lugged the giant backpack up onto my shoulders again. I've already established several times that this thing's huge. I lugged the backpack, plus lugged, right? You're not going to lug a small backpack, so I can lose that. I lugged the backpack up onto my shoulders. Where else onto my shoulders is it going to go but up, right? So uh, lug the backpack onto my shoulders again. We already know that she's done it before, so there's no sense in putting again. Um, I lugged the backpack onto my shoulders, leaned for a moment against a tree to find my balance, and then left the highway. We don't need it then. We know it's going to be then. And left the highway, headed due west. Is there any other west other than due west? I don't know. So I lugged the backpack um, onto my shoulders, leaned we don't need this for a moment, right? How else do you lean? I assume my readers aren't going to assume that she leaned there for three days, right? That it's just going to be a moment. So I'm always trying to polish this, right? Get these words out of here that look clunky and cause my reader to, to read words they don't have to read. So leaned against a tree to find my balance and left the highway headed west. So left the road headed west. This is something I've found myself doing a lot. I'm describing this road as a highway, but it's really not. It's not that um, established. So I uh, just switched that to road. Lugged the backpack onto my shoulders. Leaned against a tree to find my balance. I may come back and make this more specific. Right? I'm always looking for those opportunities to... Um, bring uh, bring my reader more into an actual place that exists in their mind. So I may do something like a gnarled stump. Um, yeah, I kind of like that better. That may change down the road, but leaned against a gnarled stump to find my balance and left the road. See, 
what I'm really going for here, the feeling is that she's going off into the the wilderness, right? The true wilderness now away from the road. So I don't want the focus to be on the road, right? I don't want the focus to be that she left the road. I want the focus to be that she's entering into kind of this wild land of danger. So I'm just going to flip this, right? Rather than the perspective of her leaving the road, I want her um, and entered the forest headed west. Um, entered is a um, a weak word here, right? It doesn't provide any kind of insight, any kind of visual picture for what she looks like at this point. So it could be something like stumbled into uh, the forest heading west. Um, I'm not sure I want her stumbling, but I do want that feeling of you know, what is a word for walking when you have a lot of pressure on your shoulders, right? You're kind of downtrodden or um, hunkered and hunkered into the forest, um, headed west. I, I don't know that I'm crazy about hunkered here. I'm going to go to my thesaurus, which you probably see me use um, a lot um, and see if that's even a word that, that they recognize. Hunker, okay, bend, bowed, cowered, dipped, ducked, groveled, huddled, hunched. Ooh, I hunched into, yeah, that's close. Kneeled, quailed, right? If I get into these words that I don't know or wouldn't have ever thought of, I'm not going to use it. <laughs> Scrooch down, right? <laughs> you find some funny things here. Um, sometimes I find a great words with friends word in here. Quat, right? I didn't know that was a word, so that might show up in my next uh, words with friends game to get rid of those uh, valuable cues. So, uh, and hunkered into the force. I, I, I'm kind of liking this. This may be something that gets changed in a final draft here, but I like this feeling of um, being weighted down, but also kind of, uh, kind of worried, right? You hunker down if you are avoiding a disaster. So this kind of works. So I lugged the backpack onto my shoulders, leaned against a gnarled stump to find my balance and hunkered into the forest headed west. Yeah, I'm kind of digging that. Um, even with the highway disappearing behind me, I figured I had intersected a few times along the way, considering how much it wound through these mountains. Again, dead language here, right? If she's headed into the forest, of course, the highway is going to disappear behind me. Um, so I could lose that section. I figured I'd intersect intersect that's a not a word that i feel like she'd use not that she wouldn't know it she just would not think in language like intersect so i figured i'd come across the road a few times along the way there's that way which i talked about weeks ago that i do not like so we'll get rid of that i figured i'd come across um, again, this is language I don't like. I figured I'd stumble across. Um, stumble across the road a few times. Considering how much it, no, just how it wound through. I like back and forth, back and forth. I still need through in there, though. But I'm trying to get that kind of zigzag. Oh, considering how it zigzagged. Uh, I don't know about that now that I see it in there. So I lug the backpack onto my shoulders. I lug the pack. I'm always looking for places to short these, shorten these things. I lug, I lug the pack onto my shoulders, leaned, leaned against a gnarled stump to find my balance and hunkered into the forest headed west. I figured I'd stumble across the road a few times considering how it zigzagged through these mountains. Um, I figured I don't like here, right? So this, we obviously know that she's figuring this because it's all from her perspective. So I don't feel like I need to say this. So um, I'd, I'd likely stumble across the road a few times. Um, considering how it zigzagged through these mountains. So what's bothering me here, you may have already seen it as I just threw an adverb in here, which I never like to do. 
so I'd likely stumble across the road a few times considering how it zigzagged through these mountains. I do, you know, I do leave them sometimes. It's not like they're, you're never going to find an adverb in my writing. You'll probably find still way too many. But I do make them fight for their place on the page. And right now, this one is winning, at least temporarily, as I look at this. Uh, because I want kind of this guessing, uh, kind of this hopeful thought. And it's not going to be sure, right? So I'd likely stumble across the road a few times considering how it zigzagged through these mountains. All right, so that's a couple of paragraphs. Um, it's actually... <laughs> it's actually what we uh, um, revised today was here, right? This is all we looked at. But remember, there was that whole paragraph that we took out. So I consider that a success. Um, I, I was thinking today, um, as I was sitting down to do this real-time revision, about the very first book that I wrote. And... Um, how, um, at, at that point I thought that bigger equaled better, right? My goal was to write a big book because big books were impressive, right? Big books meant that you had accomplished something. So I remember as I was drafting that book that if I thought of something, it went in the book, right? Even if it wasn't that connected to what I was writing about. And this was kind of a memoir. So it was connected to a lot of personal stories and people that I knew and experiences that I'd had. And if they occurred to me, they went in the book, right? And I remember thinking, oh, this is going to make my book bigger, right? And that was kind of my only criteria for what went in a book. And my my um, my perspective on that has completely shifted since that first book. And thank God that it has. Um, and now I am all about brevity, as you can probably see in the way that I uh, the way that I revise and a lot of the topics that we cover on the podcast, right? And the more I explore and the more I study brevity the more I'm convinced that good writing is concise writing, right? Not that you don't want to cut things out that actually need to be there, but we're questioning everything. What If it doesn't absolutely have to be there, let's get rid of it, right? Let's make it more compelling, more concise for our readers, because that's ultimately the experience that we're going for. So uh, we're going to end there with today's real-time revision. Thank you again so, so much for being a member of the Patreon team. Um, I, I value that so much. I can't even express how much. Um, I know we're just kind of getting started with that, and the Patreon team is a little small right now. I'm really hoping hoping as uh, the podcast picks up steam again, which uh, it, it is showing signs of doing, which is very exciting, uh, that we get a lot more activity, a lot more conversation here, and a lot more debate, honestly, about some of the ways that I'm revising things and some of the way I look at my work, right? I understand that uh, this is an artistic process and everybody has their own priorities, their own techniques, their own angles. And I would love for this uh, Patreon team to be an opportunity for us to kind of get into the nitty gritty of writing and explore it together. So um, if you feel like uh, jumping in, making some comments about the real-time revision, a couple of places you can do that. Uh, you can do it through YouTube, right, When for the link for this video. I'd much prefer you actually do it over at patreon.com slash bradreadwrites, where we can keep that conversation in the Patreon community there uh, that everybody would have access to. Thanks again for listening so, so much. Um, I'm so excited to be back doing the podcast and having a lot of fun with these real-time revisions. As always, if you have a suggestion for something specific you'd like me to cover in these, I would love to hear it. You can go to bradreadwrites.com and click on that talk to us link and uh, shoot me your ideas there. All right, that's going to do it for this week. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.